I'm joined today by Margaret Bacher, who is the concertmaster for the Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra and also the violin soloist on a beautiful new album from the group. Welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, let's talk about this this lovely recording on the BIS record label. Uh, a bunch of different works here, uh, three different living composers alongside a concerto of uh, J.S. Bach. Now, you've been with the orchestra for 20 years now. Was this sort of like a, a celebration of your, your anniversary, as it were? It, it, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's how it began. I, I'd been wanting, I'd worked with Pierre Jalbert um, many, many years ago at, at the orchestra. He was one of our composer in residence, and I always loved his music. And since that time, I've, I've performed many chamber works by him. And I always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to uh, commission a, a concerto from him. And it took a very long time to come to fruition, but uh, I stuck with it. And we uh, decided to go the route of a, of a co-commission, actually a tri-commission, um, with Milwaukee Symphony and the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra. And that is becoming more common, I would say, today in terms of commissioning, because it makes it easier for each organization to do. And uh, I, I just, when I received the concerto, I just, I couldn't, can't tell you how thrilled I was. I just yeah. thought it was exactly what I had hoped it would be. Yeah. Pierre Jalbert, I mean, I, I want to give it the, you know, the full French pronunciation because of it, the name. But he, he actually calls it Jalbert. <laughs> Jalbert, okay. He, yes. Good yes. to know. Um, yeah. That's a composer that I, I have to admit I'm not really that familiar with, um, and, and probably this will be one of the first works of his that, that our listeners are able to hear. Can you tell us a little bit more about him as a composer? Yes, he, uh, he's won many awards for many of his, his pieces. Uh, he was born in Canada, but he is uh, on the composition faculty at Rice University in Houston, and um you know he's a he's a very respected composer. He's perhaps not a, a household name, but there are he writes many works for um, Lincoln Center chamber players for different orchestras. He's had premieres with so many major orchestras, Pittsburgh Symphony, uh, across the country. He's he's just done a lot of of works, and yeah. we we had him like i said as very early on in his career actually as our composer in residence because jeffrey kahane had uh, worked with him i believe in new york and really loved his music and so he was one of our very first composers in residence yeah jeffrey kahane the, the conductor of the uh, chamber yes. orchestra and on this recording yes. i know you've done quite a bit of work with him as well yeah i have he's a Besides being a wonderful conductor, he's also an extraordinary pianist. And so we've done, over the last two decades, we've done uh, many, many concerts together, all the Brahms sonatas, all the Beethoven sonatas, uh, countless pieces of chamber music. So we we have really, I've so enjoyed uh, the relationship that we've had over the last two decades at, yeah. at the Chamber Orchestra. Let's talk a little bit more about this uh, violin concerto by Pierre Jalbert. Uh, it's a world premiere recording, obviously written for you. You were one of the violinists that premiered it, along with the others. Yes. And yes. it's in two different movements. And listening to it, it, it's very. It starts out very ethereal. It kind of draws you in, and and there's a lot. It seems like going on under the surface that you're not really aware of until you get, you know, totally into the second movement when things really get going. What can you tell us about like the nature of the concerto itself? I think, you know, it's very much in the vein of Pierre's music, which I find very soulful. Uh, he has a certain mysterious quality to his to his music. And I love, I, I personally love the way this concerto begins because it, like you say, it, it takes time to develop it. It's not just, you know, crash bang, <laughs> here's no. a violin concerto. It You have to stick with it. And it has this, a, a narrative through that first movement that really drew me in. And then, of course, you move into the second movement, which is much more of a kind of scherzando movement, very technically uh, oriented, very rhythmically diverse. Um, and so uh, ending with this kind of brilliant cadenza that leads into the coda. So it, it for me, it was, it was a, I guess I was a little surprised when he, uh, when I received the score and it was two movements instead of three. I guess I had imagined it was going to be um, three movements, but now I understand why, because his ideas 
took time to develop. So, you know, it's already a 27 minute concerto. Um, so it, it made sense that he did it in two movements. Yeah. And I have to say those 27 minutes go by fairly quickly because it, it's uh, so interesting and enticing to the ear. And, I'm glad uh, to hear that. <laughs> yeah. And, and lovely performance as well. The other two living composers on here, Arvo Pert and Petrus Vasques, uh, you've got Fratres in, in its mm-hmm. early version by Arvo Pert. That's a piece that a lot of people know in one version or the other. But yes. this piece by Petrus Vasques, Lonely Angel, I had not heard that before either. And that is just a, a remarkable, remarkable piece. Well, I, I think the the evolution of this recording, we had the rights to the to the Jalbert premiere, but you know, then you have to think about, well, what else are we going to put on the record? And when we uh, joined with BIS to put this record out, they wanted an all orchestral CD. And so I had to come up with some different options for them uh, based on their own catalog and based on the, their preference. And I really felt that I wanted three living composers uh, to pair, to, to complement the music of, of Bach. And f- all my life, I've felt that Arvo Pert and Bach somehow are closely related. They, they're they very uh, spiritual composers. And I felt that they, I always have tried to program in my own, apart from this CD, uh, put both of those composers on the same program. So it, that made sense to me. And I love, I've always loved Fratris. I think this arrangement of it is, is really lovely. It is the first arrangement. Um, and then it, 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 I started searching for that last work on the record. And it was a piece that I had heard a, a few years ago and thought was really very special. But the specific reason for going in that direction was that, um, I had the great fortune of performing this CD on, um, uh, the great Milstein Stradivarius. And mm. that violin uh, has a extraordinary E string, which is the top string of the violin. And the Lonely Angel is a piece that is centered on the high register of the violin. So I, it felt like, oh, that's the perfect yeah. connection, you know, to, to feature the sort of that high end of this beautiful Stradivarius. Um, and I, I also feel like Petrus Vosk is a composer. It's, he's a very interesting Latvian composer, a uh, disciple of Ludoslavsky and Penderecki. And he, his writing is always so lyrical. Uh, and this piece is really a meditation. It's actually called, he called it a violin concerto, but it's not normally referred to in, in the concerto sense. But it is a meditation, and it's so contemplative and, and just very personal on many levels. So I thought it was a beautiful way to end the CD and sort of take us from Pierre's concerto through Bach, through Pert, and then eventually um, sort of sending us off into the heavens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. yeah. and, well, it's interesting you mentioned uh, playing that Strad with the, uh, the E string because it really struck me the high register of, of the violin being explored in that piece, but but also a little bit in the other pieces, especially in Fratres and mm-hmm. even in the uh, Jalbert uh, Violin Concerto. Was that something you were aware of when you were putting this program together? Um, not specifically. I mean, Fratres is, is, you're right, in that it has a lot of high writing. I think in general, when people write concertos or write pieces for the violin, um, that is what sets us apart from the other string instruments is our yeah. E string. So they do tend to focus, especially in the more brilliant type of writing. Peep composers tend to feature the E string, but Petrus Vosk chose to feature it in a much more lyrical way, um, which I love. Yeah. So it, it wasn't it wasn't really conscious I, I, uh, in terms of all of the concertos having that common thread. But now that you mentioned it, I guess I guess that's yeah. true. Well, it, it was bound to happen, I guess, <laughs> with, with <laughs> yes. the violin. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, what do you normally play on your instrument? My instrument is a uh, also a beautiful instrument that's called a composite violin. It's made by uh, Antonio uh, Amati, uh, sorry, Niccolo Amati and Antonio Stradivarius. It was. Uh, Amati was Stradivarius's teacher in Cremona. Oh. And apparently this violin had 
it was originally made by Amati and damaged at some point, probably uh, in the er, like 1710, 1715, and taken to Stradivarius' shop. And although Strad did not normally restore instruments, it, because it was his teacher, he apparently did. And he took the top off and made a new top and revarnished it and put a label in it that said restored by Antonio Stradivarius. So wow. it's a it's a composite instrument, which I also really, really love. But um, the, the, the Milstein Strad is, is, you know, one of the real extraordinary instruments uh, left to us by Stradivarius. So uh, I was, there's a collector here in Los Angeles who bought the violin about, a decade ago or a little bit more. And so I get the great pleasure of playing on it from time to time and love doing that. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, you've been playing for a long time, obviously. Can you tell us just a little bit of, of your early background uh, when you came to start on the violin? I know you were, what, you were still a teenager, right? About 15 years old when you made your professional debut? Yes, I was. I, I started early. My mother was a violinist. I grew up in Texas, and she was a violinist and taught me at the age of three. And it, my my children even asked me sometimes, like, what, what, when did you decide to be a violinist? And I said, I never decided. It just was a fait accompli. Yeah. <laughs> I, I started so young and loved it so much that I never turned away from it. So it was just a natural progression. But I, I was very fortunate. I've been very fortunate to have great training in my life, great teaching. And, uh, and now at this stage of my life, I get to combine being a performer, um, a soloist, chamber music, and, uh, and being a concert master of a great orchestra, as well as uh, a great passion of mine is, is teaching. So I, I feel like I have the best of, of all worlds. Yeah. The last thing I want to ask you about is uh, we, we've talked about the three living composers you have on this recording. Sort of the uh, the odd man out is uh, Johann Sebastian Bach and this concerto BWV 1041. Was that your starting point or did you bring him in later? What was the thought process behind combining Bach with these? That was the first choice because the, our chamber orchestra, Bach, is part of our sort of DNA. And I play a lot of Bach concertos with the orchestra. And I just, I really wanted to to feature Bach uh, on this record, not only for myself, because he's so, such an important part of my musical uh, life, but also because of the orchestra. So that came after the Jalbert. <laughs> yeah, and, and it works very nicely between the uh, Jalbert and the Arvo Parrot, as you mentioned, pairing Thank you. those composers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, lovely recording, lovely performance. Uh, music of Pierre Jalbert, Johann Sebastian Bach, Arvo Pert, and Petrus Vosks. Margaret Bacher, the violinist with the Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra under Jeffrey Kahane, available from BIS Records. Margaret, uh, stay safe out there with all the wildfires. Uh, you know, just thinking of you and wishing you all the best out there. And thank you for joining us here on FM 91. Thank you so much.